but Holmes did not go to bed that night. He was a man who sometimes stayed awake for a whole week when he was working on one of his cases. He filled his pipe, then he sat down, crossed his legs, and looked with fixed eyes at the ceiling. I was already in bed and soon went to sleep. Holmes was still smoking when I woke up next morning. It was a bright, sunny day, but the room was full of tobacco smoke. Are you awake, Watson? Yes. Would you like to come for an early morning drive? All right. Then get dressed. Nobody is up yet, but I know where the servant who looks after the horses sleeps. We shall soon have the carriage on the road. Holmes laughed to himself as he spoke. He seemed to be a different man from the Holmes of the night before. As I dressed, I looked at my watch. It was not surprising that nobody in the house was up. It was only 4.25. Soon, Holmes came back and told me that the carriage was ready. I want to test a little idea of mine, he said as he put his shoes on. I think, Watson, that I am the most stupid man in Europe. I deserve to be kicked from here to London. But I think I have found the explanation of Neville St. Clair's disappearance now. Yes, Watson, I think I have the key to the mystery. And uh, where is it? I asked, smiling. In the bathroom, he answered. Oh, yes, I am not joking, he went on, seeing the surprise on my face. I have been there, and I have taken it out. And I have it in this bag. Come on, Watson, and let's see whether this key is the right one. The carriage was waiting for us in the bright morning sunshine. We both jumped in, and the horse rushed off along the London road. A few country vehicles were about, taking fruit to the London markets, but the houses on either side of the road were as silent and lifeless as in a dream. Oh, I have been blind, Watson, said Holmes. But it is better to learn wisdom late than never to learn it at all. In London, a few people were beginning to look out sleepily from their windows as we drove through the streets on the south side of the city. We went down Waterloo Bridge Road and across the river, then along Wellington Street. We stopped at Bow Street Police Station. The two policemen at the door touched their hats to Holmes, who was well known there. One of them looked after the horse, while the other led us in. Who is the officer on duty this morning? asked Holmes. Mr. Bradstreet, sir, answered the man. A large, fat man came down the passage just then. Ah, Bradstreet, how are you? said Holmes. I'd like to have a word with you. Certainly, Mr. Holmes. Let us go into my room. It was a small office with a desk and a telephone. Bradstreet sat down. What can I do for you, Mr. Holmes? I am here in connection with Hugh Boone, the beggar, the man who has been charged with involvement in the disappearance of Mr. Neville St. Clair. Yes, we are still busy with that case. You have Boone here? Yes, he's locked up. Is he quiet? Oh, he gives no trouble. But he's a dirty man. Dirty? Yes, he doesn't mind washing his hands but his face is as black as a coal miner's. Well, as soon as his case is settled, he'll have to have a proper prison bath. I should very much like to see him. Would you? That can easily be arranged. Come this way. You can leave your bag here. No, I think I'll take it with me. Very good. Come this way, please. He led us down a passage, opened a barred door, and took us down some stairs to another white passage. There was a row of doors on each side. The third door on the right is his, said Bradstreet. Here it is. 
he looked through a hole in the upper part of the door. He's asleep. You can see him very well, 